Hey, this is Charles with some quick tips on how to play Twilight Struggle. I'm not going to teach you how to play the game so much as I am going to show you some cool things about the interface, which, which are really nice. Um, and one thing I do want to show you first is how to play online. First thing you're do, going to do is create a Play Deck account, and this is going to allow you to play other people. Um, you can go back to Play Online, uh, log in, go to Profile. And this is where you can add your friends. You just click on the plus. You type in somebody's name. Click on confirm. Confirm again. And then you can see their status online. If you want to invite a friend to a game, you basically just do uh, create game. Invite a friend. You just click on their name and invite them to that game. So let's play offline here a bit and just take a quick look at the interface and how that works. Uh, if you want to switch to player one or player two, just click on the icon. You can change the variance here. So when you're playing an online game, there's an option to set the time limit. That's the time for the whole game. So if you set a game for like 30 minutes, that means uh, your opponent and you have 30 minutes to play every card for that um, that game. And you'll see a timer counting down when it's your turn, counting how many you know minutes it's taken you to do this. So the first thing you're going to notice here uh, when you go into a game is that you're going to place your influence. And it's going to say whatever you need to do at the very top here. Uh, if you ever need any help in the game, you can click here. If you need to undo something, you can click here. Like Let's say we add some influence here. If we wanted to undo that, we just click the undo button and that goes away. Uh, you probably already know about the battleground countries having the red at the top, if you're familiar with the regular game. The non-battleground countries don't have that. You'll notice a temperature gauge here showing the influence in each region. So you'll notice that Africa doesn't have any influence either way. South America, Central Central America uh, all have uh, very low influence, but Europe has about a 50-50 split right now. So you can click on the Europe icon here, and you can see a list of all the different uh, battleground countries, non-battleground countries, and the point spread, and what your point spread would be if you did the Europe scoring right now. So let's uh, add a couple here, and then we'll add... Uh, so let's take a look at now, and you'll see that we have domination because we have one battle battleground country, one non-battleground country, and uh, the U.S. only has one non-battleground country and only has presence. So that's how scoring works. After you're done playing your card or your influence, you'll commit your decision by clicking here, and then it'll be the other player's turn. If you're ever curious about what the other player did, you can always follow the turn track down here. So now it's in the headline phase, but uh, you can see the setup here. You can go to here. If you want to look through your cards, so the first thing that happens after your influence is to select the headline card. So you can click on your cards here, and you can click on the arrows to go through. Decide which one that you want. So we'll select Red Scare Purge as our headline. So you just click Headline there. The opponent will play his card. You'll see the, the notation up at the top here. DEFCON has changed. We'll see the DEFCON track up here. So let's take a look at some more things on the board that you can take a look at. You'll notice that the DEFCON, DEFCON details, or when you click on the tank up here or this area, you'll see the required military operations and how many operations points are, are conducted by the American player in blue, and the Russian player in red, the current DEFCON status here, and just like in the board game, you'll see the different restrictions that are in place during different levels of DEFCON status. So during DEFCON 5, uh, everything is okay. Uh, DEFCON 4, there are no coup or realignment attempts in Europe. DEFCON 3, Asia, DEFCON 2, uh, Middle East, and DEFCON 1, of course, is end of the game. 
You can also see the space race here and all the things associated with the space race. Again, you've got the blue on the left-hand side. The right is the red for the Russian. Um, you've got the different parts of the board game as far as how uh, the effects of the space race happens here. You can also easily zoom on the map by clicking on a non-country area, such as here, and you can zoom in. You can very easily move the mouse uh, area by holding the mouse button down. You can move around. You can scroll your mouse button in or out. You can double click to zoom out and zoom in. You can also use the uh, cameras here in different parts of the game to zoom in on different players parts of the board. You want to look at that. Another thing you can do to track of what's happened in the game so far, you can see the current turn, what turn you're reviewing, the turn track, uh, what cards have been played, and how many cards you get this turn. You'll also notice in the corners there are certain icons as far as uh, events that have happened in the game. There will be some on the left-hand side as that happens for the American player. So as you click on cards here, again, you can scroll back and forth through these. Um, you can do the space race if you'd like, and that will show you the track here. You click on the dice roll, and that will automatically show you what happens uh, on the track here, whether we're a success or a failure. At the top, we're waiting for the opponent to decide. You can also save games or um, resume games that you've uh, stopped before. You can exit the game or you can forfeit, which will basically not save it. Uh, you click on exit here, and then you'll notice the game is here. And anytime I want to play that, I can go back to there. It'll reload that same game. Let me finish off where I was from before. And that's pretty much it. I just wanted to give a brief interview with the interface and some of the cool features that are in there that some people may not have noticed. And I hope this helps you get the chance to play the game, and I hope you have fun.